Hello friends, this is Marcy from The Scribbled Word, and today I have a process video for you. Um, we're going to take a look at some scriptures in the book of John together, and I wanted to work through documenting what I'm learning from this portion of scripture, and show you a few tips on making a banner and watercoloring. Um, but before we get into that scripture portion of the video, I wanted to talk to you for a minute about Bible journaling, why I do it, and how I approach the process in general. So for me, there are four basic steps that I follow when I'm Bible journaling. Um, the first is to identify the scripture that I want to journal. Sometimes I am inspired by a sermon that I've heard on Sunday, or it could be something from a devotional from my own quiet time, reading the scriptures from a song that I've heard, or even a poem. Um, sometimes it's something that my kids have said, um, and I'll want to put that in my Bible. And So I'll identify the scripture, and then the next step is to write out what, what I've learned, what the Lord's been laying on my heart from that scripture and um, what I think I wanted to document. Um, and then I will usually move to prepping my page. This is something that is optional. It's not necessary, but I, I feel that it makes less wrinkles in my page and I don't have to worry about um, whatever mediums I'm using bleeding through to the other side or, you know, having, causing problems with my page. So I like to, I like to prep my page and here I have an example of me prepping one of my pages. It's not the one working in today, but I, I like to use the Golden Mediums Acrylic Graze, Glazing Liquid and there are other options out there, but that's what I use. And then the fourth step is just to surround myself with supplies and all of my art supplies and just enjoy the process use my imagination and see where things go the Word of God is one of the primary ways that we get to know our Savior and our Lord and it's so essential for life um, you know when you talk about the the armor of God it's the first thing you put on is truth and it's the last thing you take up is the word, and um, you know it's how we it's how we know him and how we know truth. And um, Bible journaling is is a one way that I interact with Scripture, that I um, meditate on the words of God and remember the things that He is teaching me um, and laying on my heart. And as a visual learner, seeing a visual representation of Scripture helps me to remember. The truths I am learning and it helps me to enjoy the process and then I can also look back and see in a unique way my journey with the Lord um, just right there in the pages of his amazing book so the book that I'm going to be journaling from today is from the book of John um, the 14th chapter and right before this this chapter we see Jesus speaking to his disciples and he tells them that he's only going to be with them for a little while longer and then he is going to go and where he's going they cannot follow him and then he tells them to love one another and gives them this renewed commandment and then Simon Peter says to him but Lord where are you going and he says where I am going you cannot follow me but later you will follow me and then a little while down in chapter 14, he says to them, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also, and you know the way to where I am going. So when Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you, but I will come again and receive you unto myself, 
that where I am, there you may also be. This was something that was very typical for a Jewish man to say to his bride before leaving to prepare the home for her. And some years ago, I began looking into the customs and the traditions surrounding the ancient Jewish wedding ceremony, and I wanted to document this in my Bible, because I feel that understanding this gives me a deeper and clearer understanding of Scripture and the role of the Church as the Bride of Christ. So earlier you saw me numbering each of the different steps of the ancient Jewish wedding in that printout that I had. And here I am just doing a basic layout, spacing the seven banners that I'm going to put in the column of my Bible to um, represent these seven basic steps of the ancient Jewish wedding. And if you'd like to see an example of this from Scripture, you can look in Genesis 24, when Abraham sends his servant to find a bride for Isaac, um, which is Rebekah. You can see in, in much of that story, you can see the example of, of the way that the ancient Jewish wedding was set up and the steps that were taken. So here I'm measuring about how wide I want my banner to be and so that it will fit in the margin. And you'll see me draw a simple banner. Basically, you're going to have a line, um, a perpendicular line on either side, and then a horizontal. the horizontal line that goes across is going to be slightly curved, almost like a smiley face would be, um, as you can see me do here. And then I'm going to make the flags on each side. <laughs> so I'm erasing my marks. Okay. So on this side, you just come slightly down from the top, and you just do a little ways out, and then the bottom line of the flag will be slightly under the bottom line of the banner. And then you just kind of loop it up to touch the banner, and then you connect the lower corner of the banner with the lower corner of the flag, and that gives the appearance of the part that folds under the banner. It's pretty simple, but if you haven't done banners before, you can practice a few times on a separate piece of paper. And then you could use this banner and put it underneath the page and then just trace it so that they're, each one is exactly the same, or you can do like I did, just freehanded and um, I don't mind the imperfections since it's a handmade project. And so, but you will seem to make a few mistakes here in a minute. Um, but while I'm doing this, I'll speed it up here for you and I'll talk to you a little bit about the ancient Jewish wedding and the different steps that um, were involved with it. So the first step in the ancient Jewish wedding was called the Shidukim. And these were the arrangements preliminary to the betrothal, or the engagement. It was common in ancient Israel for the father of the groom to select a bride for his son. Now sometimes they would also send a representative to do the selection, as we can see Abraham sends his servant to find a bride for Isaac. So here you can see me trying to write the word shidukin in the banner and I have to redo it a few times because I didn't count my letters and get it centered there quite right. Um, but the next step, which you see me writing here in the in the ancient Jewish wedding, was called the ketubah. And this means written in Hebrew. And this was basically the marriage contract. It would supply the provisions and the conditions of the marriage. And it was the moment when the bride would give her consent to marry if she it was basically when she would say, yes, I will, or say, I do. Um, the third step was the mohar. This was the bridal payment or the bride price. It is paid by the groom to the bride's family, and it changes her status and would set her free from her parents' household. And then the fourth step is the mikvah. This was a ritual immersion. It was commonly practiced for the bride and the groom to separately take the ritual immersion prior to betrothal. It was symbolic of spiritual cleansing. And then the fifth step would be erosin. Um, this basically means betrothal. It was also called kiddushin, which means sanctification or set apart. 
This is the time allocated for the couple to prepare for marriage. It is so binding that a religious divorce was necessary to annul it, and only the husband could do so. Under the hoopa, gifts of value were exchanged and a cup of wine was shared. This irusim, or kiddushim, lasted about one year, um, and where the bride and groom were technically married, but they lived separately. And sometimes if, if the husband tarried longer or was delayed, it might take up to two years. The sixth step was the matan, which is a bridal gift. Just prior to leaving the groom, just prior to leaving, the groom would give his wife a gift as a pledge of his love for her. Its purpose was to remind her of his love and his thoughts towards her and that he would return to her someday. So at this point, the groom would go to prepare the home for the bride. And often this would be done by adding to his family's existing home. And the home, as determined by the rabbis, had to be better than the previous home where she lived. The father of the groom would determine when the son could receive his bride, and the bride was to keep busy preparing for her wedding day. Specifically, her wedding garments were to be sewn and to be prepared. So you can see on the opposite side of the page I'm working on, um, I have already done a watercolor painting. Um, this is my husband and I um, on our wedding day, and I wrote below it the verse that we're journaling. I will come again and take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. So I wanted to continue the theme that I had on that side with the colors of green and kind of a gray-blue, and also to do some of the roses that I had painted underneath Chris and I. And so you can see me doing that here. First I'm putting just a wash of watercolor um, in the background because I had the green on the upper right hand of the right side of the page. I'm going to go ahead and put the green on the lower left hand side over here. And then you'll see me putting the gray color on the other part on the opposite side of the page. So while I'm doing that, I'll talk to you a little bit about the final stage of the ancient Jewish wedding. And this is called the Nisuin. The Nisuin basically means the marriage. And the Hebrew verb, it comes from the Hebrew verb nasa, which means to carry. So the bride is supposed to be waiting for her groom to come and carry her off to her new home. There is great anticipation as the bride waits for the groom's arrival because it was to be a surprise. The bride knew the approximate time of the groom's return, but she did not know the exact day or the hour, for this was uncertain. So the bride and her party were always to be ready for when he may return. Often the groom, groom's party would go ahead of the bridegroom and would shout, Behold, the bridegroom comes. This would be followed by the sounding of a shofar or a trumpet. And at this, the entire wedding processional would go through the streets to the bride's house. Okay, so here you can see me painting the roses. I'm basically just putting lighter and darker shades of, of this kind of corally pink color. And I'm just doing it very simply. I have my pencil marks there, and then I'm adding some little leafy things around the edges, and it's just really a, a very simple impression of roses. And then here I'm doing the background of the gray-blue color that I told you about on the other side. And in a minute you'll see me adding some shading to the banners. But while I'm doing that, I want to finish talking to you about the marriage. So after the, the groom comes to the bride's house, the groom's men would set up the hoopah, and the bride and groom would share a cup of wine and finalize the promises and vows. Afterwards, the husband is, and then there will be the marriage supper, okay? So the marriage supper was seven full days of food, music, dance, and celebration. And then after the marriage supper is complete, then the husband is free to bring the wife into her new home. So in this ancient Jewish wedding, we can see a clear depiction of Jesus as our bridegroom and the church, his bride. The first step, the Shittikim, we can see that the father, in um, Ephesians 1.4, it says, the father chose us in Jesus 
before the foundation of the world. The second step, the ketubah, which was the marriage contract, we have is the Bible. It tells us our rights and our responsibilities, and it is our contract as well. The third step, the mohar, which is the bridal payment or the bride price, which was paid by the groom, we can see in Jesus' work on the cross that it was through the shedding of his blood that he paid the price for us. He paid the bride price. First Peter 1.18 says, We were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from our forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. We can see the matan, or the bridal gift, um, in the giving of the Holy Spirit. Because the, the bridal gift was meant to remind the bride of the love of the husband towards her and of his thoughts towards her. Um, so that we can clearly see that in the giving of the Holy Spirit. The mikvah or the ritual immersion is, is clearly seen in baptism. And then the irusin or the kiddushim, which is the betrothal period, is a period of sanctification or being set apart. And we can see this also clearly in our relationship, that this is our time of being set apart unto God, being holy. And holy, um, you know, is defined as to be set apart or to be dedicated unto. Um, the Hebrew word for holy is kodesh. And that's, that's the implication is to be dedicated unto someone or to be set apart unto something. So under each of the banners, I'm writing the definition of each of the different steps. And then you're going to see me go ahead and go over what I've written there just in my own handwriting and thicken the downstrokes of each of those letters. And this gives it the appearance of calligraphy without actually using a calligraphy pen and helps the letters to stand out a little better. Um, so, of course, the final step in the Jewish wedding, the Nisuin, or the marriage, is still future for us when Jesus comes back and gathers his church unto himself and we stand before the Son of Man. So that's the thing that we are to be looking for and to be excited about. Um, and so here you can see some close-ups of my page. And you can see in a minute some cards I wrote a little extra about the Jewish wedding that I wanted to remember. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then feel free to subscribe. And hopefully I can make some more of these process videos. Thank you for watching, and I'll hope to see you.